We pray for adoration. We pray a prayer of confession. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Great God, we approach your throne of grace with thankful hearts. We are glad that we are in your house here in San Fernando today to give you honor and glory and praise. We are glad that we are in your house to worship you, Jehovah, are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. You, Jehovah, are supreme. And there is no other God like you. So today, Father, we bow our hearts in your presence in acknowledgement of your greatness and the abundance of your mercy towards us. Bow for the beauty of the earth and we praise you. For the good things around us, we praise you. For the abundance of your grace in our lives, we praise you. We are grateful that you are faithful even when we are sometimes unfaithful. We are glad that you are merciful even when we are slow to be merciful. We are glad that your grace reaches us at our point of need and give us the assurance that you will never leave us of our things. Gracious God, Today we declare our love for you and ask you for the grace to love you more. This we pray through Jesus' almighty name. We now have our prayer of confession. So let us in silence confess our sins to God. For the word says that if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves that the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, He is merciful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all of righteousness. So search your hearts in silence, my dear brothers and sisters, as you quietly pray for forgiveness.
this we pray in the Lord and name of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We know a prayer of thanksgiving. All together.
know if it's because of all the march yesterday and the, I don't know if we tired or whatever, but I think we're missing a little lead, a lead voice here. So somebody with a nice voice want to lead, come with this mic. Me, how about you girls? <laughs> so we need a lead voice here. I don't depend on mine, it's not that good. I sing in the minutes all the time. Someone. So let's just do this verse again, right? Because...
come out there here that we be so and true and let God. Testimony or two, you want to share <laughs> about the God in your life. That's the point of those now. Feel free. And I ain't hurry, I ain't going nowhere now. <laughs> and I need to go home and see. This testimony is about this very song. When I was a young Christian, <laughs> <laughs> many, moons. <laughs> many moons ago. Myself, I've been to that, yes. You will know the name Julian Mitchell. Yes. Right. She was part of my, my our group. Julian Mitchell, the late Linda Martinez, and some others, Maureen Mendoza, she was a dead of the to give me a And God put me among there, but they were late comers. And I don't like being late at all of them. But that does not school. But Linda and I will pray for me. So we would go out together. She's now past two. And we went by Julie. And she said, that's June. We went by June. But Julie was not born. But my little two-year-old daughter, Royan, was there. And the home help. So we allowed the home help to know that we are there. And we hugged up and chatted with Royan. And we left. When the mother came, Royan went to the mother. And the help told the mother that someone, the two ladies were here to you, one of your friends. She said, uh-huh, who is it? And she couldn't remember Linda and Billy, because they said Linda and Billy like Jam and Jenny. But Roy Ann said to her, Mommy, you're here for me, you're here for me. But, yeah, 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 you're here for me. And she was trying to sing that song because whenever we went to Jumin, that is what was our theme song. Love lifted me. So uh, little Royal was trying to sing that song for the mother to know. When the mother realized what she was saying, she said, Auntie Linda and Auntie Billy? <laughs> she said yes. So that song has a very um, moving impact in my life whenever I hear it. I feel the presence of God. Now, Royan at present is an opera singer in Europe. Wow. So, Lord, 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 Lord. And I give him praise for the continuance of his hand in her life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sometimes and we ask the Lord to bless the day and help us and be with us throughout, you know, sometimes people do it as a routine and I've always tried to make sure that we focus, focus not on doing things as routine but on really ready for you know, it coming deep from within our hearts and yesterday morning I got up and I really asked the Lord to protect me and you know and take us, take me through the day of a really, really busy upcoming week and you know and yesterday when I came into the church here, yeah, before going to the pilgrimage, I parked my car on a spot and looked back at it and said, you know, I am here first and instead of parking in this spot that is easier to access, let me park on a spot that is more difficult to access so the persons who come after me will not have it as hard. And when we came from the pilgrimage, on the spot that I was parked before, a car lost control and was on top of the car in the lower level, right on the spot that I have moved from. And you know, it's just again another message for us as we do things to know that every day, how much we must divide the presence of the Lord, guiding, directing us. So I just want this one. Hello. <laughs> 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 
to our preacher, Brother Fearful Asmelville. It's always a joy to have you here. It's the first for the year that we are seeing you, so we want to wish you all the best for the year and that God will continue to keep you, God will continue to strengthen you, and you will just continue to plant your feet deeper and deeper in God and see the heights that He can take, even higher than you think you are right now. All right, so we bless God for you and your family. Take our greetings to Paxton Bay Methodist Church for us. Thanks and appreciation to those who came, the sanctuary, the musicians, the ushers, the audiovisual team, the readers. Thank you for all that you are doing and we appreciate it under God. Prayers, please continue to pray for our church, our circuit, our district, all those who are not enjoying the best of health, those who are bereaved, and we remember Sister Janet Douglas and family, we remember the De Pisa family as well. Okay, we remember also in our prayers the people of Venezuela, Mozambique, New Zealand, and all the countries around the world that are experiencing some sort of disaster. Birthdays and anniversaries, do we have anybody celebrating a birthday today or during the course of the week? None? Yeah, well, the person is absent, okay. We move right along. Any anniversary besides mine? <laughs> no anniversaries? We'll do the anniversary some later on. The notices are as follows. No evening service will be held today. No service today. San Fernando Congregational Council. This meeting will take place on Tuesday, the 26th of March at 6 p.m. So please, all persons for the Congregational Meeting on Tuesday, Please be in attendance. Lenten midday service continues this Wednesday at 12 noon. The preacher will be Sister Marissa Hassel Lawrence. Kaiserbach Superior Methodist Church concert. It's this Friday, the 29th of March from 7 p.m. It costs $150 in advance, $200 at the door. And those who have tickets, please ensure that you pay for them. So you will give me the money as soon as possible. Thank you. Circuit Pastoral Council meeting. This was started for Saturday coming, but it has been rescheduled to Sunday instead. So Sunday the 31st of March from 4.30 p.m. right here in San Fernando. That is the Circuit Pastoral Council meeting where all class leaders, all system class leaders, all congregational stewards, Sunday school superintendent, all leaders, you need to be here next week Sunday at 4.30 p.m. The circuit council meeting, which was also called for that Saturday, Saturday the 30th of March, has been rescheduled to Sunday the 7th of April from 4.30 p.m. right here in San Fernando. Circuit health fair, this takes place on April the 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the church compound. More information you will hear about after. McLean Congregation Youth Rally, this takes place on Saturday, April 6th, from 5 p.m. on the theme, Revive, and it takes place at the McBean Methodist Church. Youth and Quentro, July 22nd to the 28th, in the city of Belize. So July 22nd to the 28th, Youth and Quentro. Quentro to Methodist Church invites us to support them in the annual fundraiser, April the 25th, the Caribbean Pot. As time goes by, you can hear more information on this. So these are all the notices that I have for today and for the week. God bless you and I hope you remember something. And I now hand over to Sister Anne. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is Okay, so I know what uh, they bring up the slides on the screen. So we acknowledge that Besides, while God is, we are growing spiritually, God also wants us to be well physically and emotionally. And therefore, we would like to be focusing at this time Alright, when we look at, I can't see it's looking on that side, but if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and you look at verse 19, you'll see, uh, do we want to read together? 
to the lunar glow that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you which you have from God and that you are not your own and verse 20 says for you were brought with a price therefore glorify God in your body now this tells us that God wants us to be spiritually well physically well and mentally so that we could fulfill the purpose for which we were created so we move to the next slide now when we look at the research we see that from research 90% of type 2 which is the adult type diabetes 80% of heart diseases and 70% of colon and other cancers, some other cancers can be prevented by making healthy lifestyle choices now you can make a choice about your health in either to worry about it or to do something about it so when you sit down and what is what it is that you say people said before prevention is better than cure and we know that the medicine that they focused in, in years gone by was more curative medicine which means people waited till they get sick and went to be cured and get medication and we know medications have side effects now they are looking at mainly preventative so you are in your control try and prevent so when you make healthy lifestyle choices therefore you have to change behaviors and you have to make a difference also by looking at the things you do in order to have a, not just a longer life but the quality so you're looking at making a difference in the quality and quantity of your remaining years now let's look at some of the conditions that result from poor lifestyle choices heart diseases hypertension which is high blood pressure Obesity, which is when you too are yeah, overweight, stroke, diabetes, kidney disease, cancer, HIV, AIDS, and STDs. So those are some of the things. And you know, there was a uh, once when a uh, man, his wife was complaining. He went to the doctor. You know, the doctor said, you know, uh let me check you and you know what what's going on with you he said you know uh because you are impotent and you have diabetes when he went home and the wife said what did the doctor say he said the doctor said i'm important and i'm sweet <laughs> so we, we want to know that you understand what is being said to you so all these things from poor lifestyle choices can result. So we go on to say from the other side that you can accomplish accomplish your health and we're looking at optimal health spiritually, physically, and emotionally. The spiritual part, I know Brother Medley will deal with. But we're looking at what you need to do, exercise regularly, and when we say regularly, at least five, how much times a week? Three to five times a week. For, for how long? For at least half an hour. Right. And we're looking at different types of exercises that you should be doing. Right? There are different types. You have the strengthening exercises, you have the aerobic exercises, you know, muscle strengthening. So when, for instance, you used to be opening the jar and now you're going to look for somebody to open the jar for you, you know, you need to try and do some exercises there. And also exercises for balance. When you stand on one foot and you try closing your eyes, if you can't do it with the eyes closed in the beginning, Open the eyes first, stand near wall because if you try to stay in the open and with one foot, you may find yourself getting, you know, that you may fall. You don't want you to fall. And you're eating healthy. So you're eating a well-balanced diet. And all these fat diets, 
fun. I said that I said people are going on to lose weight fast. You cannot sustain it. Therefore, when you go to eat again, you're going to put back all the weight and even know because your body now adjusted and your metabolism, metabolism has slowed down. You want to manage stress. There's nothing like a stress-free life. You have to manage stress and you have persons there at the health. They're telling you more about that. So when you walk into the house and instead of the door backing at you, you backing at the door, you know you need to do something. Get adequate sleep. How much sleep you should be getting? Right, six, eight hours sleep every night. Stop the smoking. There's nothing like I'm just smoking in moderation. Because anything, from the time you stop smoking, half an hour after, heart rate start going down and different things start, you start improving. Limit your intake of alcohol. And you want to do your routine head screening. That is very important. Know your family history. Also very important so you know two persons might be doing the same thing, but the results may be different because of family history. So we want persons to know that we will be doing like blood pressure screening and what that. So and other screening as we move on. So this Methodist Church has recognized, remember that a lot, we have a lot of aging population in the Methodist Church. And we know that we have to be able to do things, to be able to live, as we say, a good quality life. So we, therefore, it has been thing, we are encouraging people to come and get the health screening and to have healthy lifestyles, they will be advised. And this is, as they say, on the 6th of April, it is free. One of these tests costs over $400. Persons will be getting it free of charge. So we will really like people to capitalize on it, get it sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, and vision screening, and more, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, when we look, and we want to just give you a little insight into what you will be preventing. And let you look at it. Diabetes is going to cause things like glaucoma, so it interferes with the eyes, it interferes with the foot, and these are just some of the more common ones because diabetes interferes, it interferes with the nerve supply, and therefore a number of conditions develop. And persons end up having, as you see, that picture is a dialysis, where you know the kidney shut down and they have to have access to a vessel, sometimes in the neck or in the hand, or onto a machine to wash out the blood because you no longer pass in urine and you can't keep the germs in the body. And sometimes then you have to move on to be able to be taking insulin for the rest of your life. Remember, if you are already doing it, follow your doctor's instructions. But if you are not here, you can prevent it. We move and look at our blood. We want to just remind persons for accurate results. Do not eat or drink anything sweet. Do not eat. You can drink your water, but nothing to drink sweet at least two hours prior to having your blood sugar screening done on the day of the test. Um, so we're looking at, we also take checking the blood pressure. And we say that the blood pressure is the force of the blood as it travels through the vessels, the blood vessels. Increasing the pressure makes the heart have to push harder because think of your blood vessels as a plumbing. And when that heart has to push to anything that's blocked, it has to work harder. And as it, work, as it works harder, it puts great stress on the arteries and on the heart. And therefore, if this continues, you end up with cardiovascular diseases, which are a range of diseases that affect your heart and affects your blood vessels. So, we're checking also your cholesterol. Now, we know that cholesterol is also made, that's why that's one of the areas you have to know to if it's in the family. So, anything high, if you see like this is 168, is that a good cholesterol? Yes, it is. Right? You don't want it over 200. Now, high cholesterol, if you look at the vessels on top, remember we said that the vessels are like your plumbing, you will see how clear it is, and as cholesterol and things builds up, eventually it could form a clot. When it forms a clot, 
Therefore, that part of the organ that is to be being supplied by blood is no longer getting the blood, no longer getting the oxygen. Therefore, anything without oxygen, what happened? It dies. So when you hear somebody get a heart attack and they have a part of the muscle dies, sometimes it's massive, sometimes it's a small thing, but you know, if it's a heart, of course, the person could get heart attack. If it's a brain, like some people call it brain attack, but you can also get a stroke, and this is just a person with facial palsy because of part of it. So we know all of this could be prevented. If we know where we are, then we get in the right type of advice to know what to do about it. So we move in to the next slide. Right. We have some physical, remember we talked about the physical and emotional counseling. You will be getting that support. Sherry Ann will be there. And you know, we have other persons who will be there also giving advice. So you're getting professional, good advice. And how are you getting it? How much you pay for it? Free. Free, free, free. So we're moving on. Yes. So you have the power to live a healthier, happier life and serve God with joy and enthusiasm. You have a longer life. You're in control now. Stay in control if you're on medication. I'm not saying stop, but take your medication, consult your doctor, and try and enjoy the rest of your life. Thank you very much. Family, in particular Janet Douglas, um, you know by now everybody should know that we had buried our dear niece on Wednesday. Well, we, we know that she's in a better place. And I just want to say thanks to each and every one of you all, whether in kind, cash, or whatever you have contributed, we appreciate it and it was such a tremendous help. We thank you all. Throughout it all, we have to thank God. She, he has given, given us her for 47 years, which it was, I mean, as everything else, it has its ups and its downs, it has its challenges. But what is so good about it is that at the end, it was sweet. Yes, there was tears with it, but it was sweet. Because he said, <clears throat> after the morning, there's the joy in the morning. But we had even joy before because Camille wasn't in any pain before she died. So, I mean, this is only at the time of because we pray that she will be free from pain and things like that. And even long before she died, she was in no pain. And we just want to give God thanks for her life. Thank God for each of you all who supported us throughout our, throughout our time and even up to now. So thank you again. We now have the uh, children here. I know the children have to go off to anything. I do you have to go to anything this morning.
we'll call it. So we call it close up, we've got to all read it together. And we'll ask the readers to come up and do from the Old Testament. All together we call it. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not out to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into the glory before he was crucified. Mercifully granted that we walking in the way of the cross, we find it not other than the way of the life of peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one of our God. For our first reading will be from the Old Testament according to Isaiah, chapter 55, reading from verse 1 to 9. Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 9. Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 9. Who, everyone who does come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without price, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy, listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen, so that you may live. I will make you, you, I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, Sure, love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do, do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and holy one of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, is the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading will be from the New Testament according to First Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to 13. Our epistle reading comes from the book of First Corinthians chapter 10, and we are reading verses 1 to 13. This these are the warnings from Israel's history. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now, these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters, as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down and ate and drank, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, 
as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down in, to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So, if you think you are standing watch, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Time for the Gospel reading. That reading will take from the book of Luke, chapter 13, reading from verse 1 to 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Saddam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all of the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and for none. So he said to the guy, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied. Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put money on it. If it bears fruit next year, well, fruit. But if not, you can cut it away. This is the word of God. All seated.
that text has two stories. And the second one is about a fig tree and a garden, which I'll focus on more in my soul. But I, I do so because I think that I do so because I think the story is clearly applicable. Maybe you should take this one off his feet. I'm not going to go through this long term life. My good sister just gave a presentation about the health fair. And she spoke about mental, spiritual, and physical. And of course, this is found in Psalm 90. When he says the days of our life is about three score and ten. That is the expected life that we will have on the average. And it says, more may be added on. You may get to 80 by virtue of good living. And good living means that you balance your mental health, your physical health, and your spiritual health. Sometimes we refer to them as bank accounts. Make sure the books balance well. Because we know sometimes there are those who, when the Sunday come, rather than heading to San Fernando Church, as good San Fernandians, they head to Maracas. Where they rip their shit and they can show their six pack. <laughs> and of course, the ladies sometimes they don't even pay, they strut up and down the beach holding the little show, showing off everything. <laughs> they are physically endowed. Their bank account physically is well packed, but spiritually lacking. And of course, there are those who come to church well dressed. They're spiritually, the Lord, they're I'm blessed. I am a highly favored. But the minister preaching and they have a word. Because they have so much problems that they can't be here. Their mind so well. That I'm not going to take from her. She will deal with that in the end. What good is But the thing about it, even in Psalm 90, it said to us that although your life is three score and ten and more may be added on, the best of those years is about toil and trouble. You are going to have tragedies in your life and it has nothing to do with you. So be prepared for the rough ride. I find sometimes too much people read words and moon and they watch young and restless and all this glory time. They don't know what. Be prepared for the ride. So it's an old age question when tragedy falls and befalls all of us. Why me? Sometimes I see good Christians cause God. Why me? I, 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 I know a good business manager who lost his life. He stopped him out early in parks. And he and he is ready to... Why did God take him away from us so soon? So it's natural, brothers and sisters, for us to ask these questions. We search our hearts. That might take a couple of for the right this morning. And the same, very same questions we are faced with, and again we read from Psalm 1. <laughs> Psalm 1 which talks about the righteous and the wicked. Talks about blessings and woe, and that word woe means a lot. The very same questions we face when we read the story of the pruning of the vines from the branch. The righteous branch will bear fruit and the wicked will throw it into the fire. So the question, my brothers and sisters, is suffering a sign that we are sinful and wicked? 
That's the question. Is suffering God's punishment for our failure? Because of the way we respond at times when it befalls us all. So let's take a deeper look this morning as good Christians. Let's take a deeper look before we get to Jesus' answer. Because he answered in the form of the parable of the victory. And that's one thing we have to admire about Jesus here. He teaches us all in parables. And the answer can be found when we interpret the parable. And we take it in to context. Let us look at every historian. Because Corinthians dealt a little bit with the history of Israel. So from deep in Israel's history, of course, before they have the written word and so on, there was an oral transmit uh, sorry, a tradition of the mode of communicating. A theology of reward and punishment became ingrained in the consciousness of the people. Israel viewed itself as God's chosen people, blessed, liberated, and delivered safely into the promised land. A people of the covenant, covenant sorry, in which God would reward their obedience and punish their failure. That is how the society was born. A covenant where they are blessed their submissions and bring curses for their resistance. And I quote, Those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. These are the teachings. My brothers and sisters, remember, when Haiti had the big old break, uh, an evangelist, I can't remember his name, it's Pat Robinson or something was the name, when he made this statement and said the Haitians brought the old break upon themselves. They made a pact with the devil, he said. And he found that they are cursed ever since. And all of us know, anytime you hear a hurricane in the Caribbean, Haiti gets in a dash. And we still with that same adage today that Haiti curse. Because of the pact they made in their own. I want to urge us all, my brothers and sisters, not to fall into that trap because we are still falling into it. We are falling into the trap of that theological framework. Because every time we say, and we say it sometimes subtle and inadvertently, what did I do to deserve this? When things don't go our way, and I always say to people here, you know, your happiness is dependent upon how you manage your disappointments. You don't need money to be happy. It's how you manage the things when it's not going your way depends on your happiness because I know people who have mounted the money and they're still here. I know people who have their quest every day to get more and more and more. The, the more they get, the more they get. They're still not happy. You look like they're happy. The mind is a mess. And happiness is the way you manage your disappointment. And when we get disappointed, we always say that. What did I do to deserve this? And equally, every time we think we deserve prosperity or health or happiness or our kindness and our hard work and for the good reward, because that's what we strive for. We strive to get all these goodies. Here yeah, sometimes some people, when well, I am successful, I am blessed, I have a favor. I have a good job, a well-paying job, a nice home and a house, I pay my tithes. You know the story about the rich fool? Everything, and when you go to God, God, sell all you have. Come for me. 
He thought he had it all. Reward and punishment. So we strive to get the reward. Even though the reward means a, a, a good saying from somebody, yeah boy, you're a good man. <laughs> we strive to become one to hear it. And those who seemingly are not as successful will feel that hey, they need to be punished. So what do we see in our society? We know the young know, folks are not just young and some men just not so young. They're running right in our society, the bandits killing at their, at their will. Just look at our national budget on, on defense alone. How much we are spending just because of this flood in our land. And we shout on the next side, punish them. And we urge GNG to go get them. And they themselves, just as those who strive for reward and richness, etc. They feel that they are deprived. They feel poverty is also a sin and a crime. That they are dealt a hand that is not right. Like a deck of cards, I can't play with a hand, I can't hang a jack with it because we ain't no it. And they feel that they are given the raw end of life. Because they just don't have. So what they do? They turn on those who they think have. <laughs> They're not even studying the punishment. Because they feel just being poor is punishment enough already. So whatever I do after this is no big thing because I've done punishing already. My friends, we just have to look how Jesus handled all this. But you know, there were several traditions, you know. And we can go through them. Because there were those traditions in which we call the prophetic tradition, which came from people like Amos. And his was a voice that says that he saw Israel's strong national worship life, and he saw their security and their wealth. But they were striving all for it. But you also saw what no one else was beginning to see. A society riddled with corruption and deceit. And I'm putting it in context because we see in our society today those who are striving for the same thing. There was oppression and there was poverty in the land. And hence his prophetic words, and I quote him, he must tell it. He says, I hate and I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will accept them not. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. And Amos says to Israel, The goodness God desires is not just faithfulness to the covenant. And just worship, but justice. So his emphasis was on justice. And then we saw in the tradition, we moved to what we refer to as the priestly tradition in dealing with people like Ezra and Nehemiah. They have said to Israel that the goodness God desires, hear how we have the whole evolution and the change and the tradition of our society into the present time, and that's why I'm building the story up for you. To the goodness that God desires is not just faithfulness to the covenant. And just worship, nor is it simply justice. Rather, it is ethnic purity. And the intermarriage, they were saying. And we hear the same cry today. White supremacists. We hear it. And of course, we have another tradition, which is the wisdom tradition that came through Ezekiel, who said to the Israelites that good, goodness, sorry, God desires, is not just faithfulness to the 
covenant. And not just worship, nor is it simply justice. And nor is it neither act in purity. In fact, Ezekiel says, goodness cannot be measured on a national level, but must be measured on a personal level. Each person has a moral responsibility. And you will each be judged by God individually. And then we move from that into what is known as the apocalyptic tradition. This came from Daniel. Goodness, he says, is all the above. But what really matters is the cosmic other world in battle between good and evil. Now we start to take it into the cosmos. The battle between good and evil. Between God and Satan. So Daniel elevated the system of reward and punishment to the level of heaven and hell. Suddenly the stakes had eternal proportions. Because we know where that whole story comes from. You do good, you go to hell. You ain't do good, you go to hell. <laughs> and of course, in the midst of all those voices, came what we refer to as the Deuteronomic tradition. It says that in there we deal with the wisdom and the apocalyptic tradition, all that way into our own subconscious resting is still, still prevalent with us, however. That says that the reward and punishment, and of course after that now come which voice? The voice of Jesus. How easily, my brothers and sisters, we forget or we distort his voice amidst all that is happening around us today. We ourselves, we cry out, why? And we forget that Jesus is among us today. As he was at the time of the Galileans. And what did he say according to the scripture this morning? And he is still saying to us today, he says, no. They were not worse sinners. He says, no, they were not worse offenders. He says, no, Pilate's injustice and Salem's tragedy were not God's wrath. He says, no. When you see a person suffering, you cannot conclude that they are sinners who have brought God's wrath upon themselves. And I don't want you to say it to yourself either. No, my brothers and sisters, suffering is not God's punishment for sin. Jesus' ministry was, if we look at it, to the poorest. Jesus' ministry was to the outcast. Jesus' ministry was to the unwanted. It was to women. It was to children. And of course, it was to the least and the forgotten, the main and the diseased. And to those prohibited at that time from national worship. To those that the society and religion claim were clearly by their very suffering the sinful ones. Because we tend to feel that the poor people are going to suffer in China. In turn, my brothers and sisters, Jesus points to those who appear blessed. That's where his whole teaching was pointed to. Those who call themselves blessed. Those who call themselves privileged. Those who call themselves highly favored and secure in this lesson is what he was telling to them. And he says to them, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, what we refer to in Tobago Palace, capsized the whole theology about reward and punishment. What Jesus does is to pick on the obscure strand of the theology. 
And he says, what good is a fig tree that bears no fruit? So that the owner of the fig tree tells the gardener to cut it down. And that's what we feel sometimes with those in society who are not bearing fruit, who are not living up to the way we, we feel they ought to. Just cut them down, get rid of them, just shoot them down. It's what we cry. The waste of space. A good friend, not too long ago, tell me, he said, Tioba, I wish slavery was still here. <laughs> I said, why you must think that? He said, well, because you have some fellows that they, they are worth nothing. And if you had a ship or you had a hole, some of them would sell them. That is something. He think of brothers and sisters who may not be seen to be better than you. So the parable of the fig tree is pointing us to where we ought to go. The gardener replied, he said, well, he says, one more year. And I'll dig around it. I'll put money on it. Perhaps next year it will bear fruit. And if not, perhaps, perhaps, then we can cut it. That's simple put, my brothers and sisters. And I am testimony to that. I am testimony to that. I had a, I love avocados. And my wife goes. Anytime we bear this avocado, stop, stop, so she has to die. And I love it so much. You know, we talk about expectations and reward. I take my time and I plant my avocado tree in my backyard. I watch it grow, watch it until it become big time to be. And I think, yeah, everybody have avocado all around me except me. <laughs> this, a, this is a living testimony. Sharp one year, one year, you are just going, you are just going. You're taking up space. My wife said, Leave me, man. You never know. I said, Girl, ah, ah, that's a foot of us. It was a man that said, I want to the voice of reason. Not always, but whatever it takes. <laughs> and I leave you. Two years passed, nothing there. I said, The taste here for sure. When I'm going with the boy, Somebody tell me to look up. I see one avocado on the tree. <laughs> like, like if God is telling me, I will put one in just for you to put it up. One single avocado to a whole tree. And he survived the damn day. <laughs> the remarkable thing about this story, my brothers and sisters. Is that we are not told about the outcome. The question asked is: Is the tree? Did the tree? Was it cut down the next year at all? We're not told. Did it ever bear fruit? We're not told. How long did the gardener keep caring for it, digging up and pruning and adding fertilizer and manure? We're not told. Did the gardener ever want you to give up like I wanted to give up on the avocado tree? Because my brothers and sisters, really, this happens to all of us. It, it, it comes into our lives. We didn't get the results. We do not know the end. So the question is, what can we discern from this problem? My brothers and sisters, I want you to listen. Because if we live life for the result, we are missing the point. Sometimes the result is not what we want, and not what we expect, but it's not our doing. It is God's doing to give the result that He so feels with deserves. If we live life for the answer, we are missing the point. They have known of people who pray today and when they don't pray, they expect to see change. They can't wait till next week or next month or next year. They want it now. I refer to them sometimes as the chicken and chips prayers. You know, you go to the little place, you pay for the chicken, by the time they about clean the chicken already, they can't wait. And he says, waste upon the Lord is in his time and space. Oh, we want the 
ังสำเราไอ้บอลเลอร์สิสเตอร์ที่คุณรักชีวิตของคุณเราไม่ได้รับผลที่ดีเราต้องการที่จะเอาเล็กๆไปที่ไหนๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆๆ
in Psalm 19 says to us, the best of your years are going to be toil and trouble. So we turn, we repent, we grow, we tend, we fertilize, we breed in circles of grace, and hopefully, I have a widen and enrich in the end. I can't say that they fix you because I don't know yet, but no one is a book of <laughs> And in these circles, my brothers and sisters, there are really only two theological questions that we need to ask ourselves. Not why this happened to me. Forget that as an old traditional thing. Why that has put Christians out of the book? When tragedy befalls you, there are only two questions in theology that you're going to ask yourself in this present age. And this coming of Jesus who has laid his life for all of us and paid the price. The only two, we are assured of a certain life because of Christ he gave. And only two things we should ask ourselves. And neither one has to do with whether suffering is a sign that we are sinful or wicked. Because Jesus already answered that question for all of us. <laughs> the only real question we should ask ourselves, my brothers and sisters, is one. I tell you two elements of one. First, ask yourself when tragedy before you. Who is the God in my life? When things are not going right, ask yourself who is the God in your life? Who is the gardener that has not given up on me? Who is the gardener that has tended me? Who is the gardener that has fertilized me? Who is the gardener that has given me a chance? He dug at my roots. He turned my soil. He watered me in the parched places. Who is the gardener in my life that has not given up on me? He said, I will be with you even unto the end. Secondly, the only two other questions we should ask ourselves. Because we must not just only get and get and get and don't give. A lot of us have seen that we aim for the reward, we aim for the work. Being a gardener is a hard, hard job. I know. I've been in it all my life. So the second question is for whom can I be a gardener? Because this is not about just getting, 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 getting. Jesus didn't do this for you alone. He also did to send you to work. That's why my good friend is saying you need to manage your health physically because if you're not in your sick, you can't walk for the Lord. Don't come and shout, Lord, 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 and you're sick and you can't walk for Him. You know, some of us who when we do and we wreck our lives when we're young and when we old, now we come into God, but we can't, He can't use us anymore. All He could do is call the wrecker. <laughs> You must be fit and ready to walk. So ask yourself, who is <laughs> to whom and for whom can I be a God? And for heaven's sake, ask that question when you're young. In whose life will I be a persistent presence of grace? And I want to tell you in closing that in living within the board questions, you will find grace. And in finding grace, we may glimpse the face of God. The God who do, does not live to reward and to punish, but lives only for love. Love lives. You can have all that areas to possess. But if you have not love, you have not much in love. Amen.
have a tight offering. Church before you. 
And we ask you to remind us of our duty to pray, to proclaim and to love, and to go and make disciples. Give us, Lord, a zeal for souls that will only be satisfied if we are involved in the building of your kingdom. Bless our leaders, Lord, and give them the mind that was in Christ. Let each member, Lord, light their candles so that we can be the light at every step of our journey. Today, Lord, we pray for those members who are sick and shut in. And we thank you for those who care for them. Lord, let them know that you are faithful and will provide all their needs as you have promised. Let them never lack in any way. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. If you pray together the Lord's prayer. Father, Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass in the earth. Lead us from our temptations, and let us rest in heaven. I am a close to him, but I have always liked that when we come, we mustn't just leave and watch for it. Let's greet each other in Jesus' name and wish them well and blessings. So, sweet supply.
get us this stuff. Will that bless him? We don't have our clothes in him. In number 33, the Lord's man shepherd will not what? Go to the tune of Philips.
Yes, you.